Hello and welcome to this program titled An Introduction to Incoterms. This is another in the 10 minute tip series of programs for credit and collection professionals. My name is Michael Dennis. I will be the presenter today. Let's begin with an introduction. The International Chamber of Commerce has developed a set of terms that it calls the Incoterms. So Incoterms are the international commercial terms. Incoterms are used when companies do business internationally. They're used in international sales where goods are being transported across national boundaries. When we're shipping products to a customer in another country, it's important, it's critical, I would say, that both parties know and accept and understand the terms of delivery, which we're referring to as the shipment terms. The International Chamber of Commerce purpose when creating Incoterms was to create standard shipping terms that both simplify and facilitate international trade. It's important to recognize that Incoterms are a set of rules that relate to interpretation of the shipping terms that are agreed to between the buyer and the seller, and more specifically, what Incoterms do is describe the rights and the duties of the two parties as it relates to an international shipment. Incoterms are a set of standardized shipping terms that buyers and sellers can but are not required to agree to. Incoterms are not laws. So which Incoterms most favor creditors? Well, the answer is it depends who you ask. This is my opinion and my position. My opinion is that the answer is XWorks, and the, the real question is why? What XWorks means is that you, the seller, the supplier, the creditor, fulfills the obligations that you have to deliver the goods when you, the seller, have made the goods available at your premises for the buyer to come and get. Under XWorks, the seller, your company, is not responsible for loading the goods on the vehicle provided by the buyer or sent by the buyer. You're not responsible for clearing the goods for export. The buyer, under XWorks, bears all costs and risks associated with taking the goods from your dock to wherever the product is going to be sent. Thus, this term, meaning XWorks, represents a minimum obligation for the seller. Basically, your obligation is to make the goods available on your dock for someone to pick up, and that's it. You're done. With this minimum obligation in mind, my recommendation, my hint, is that if your company is not insisting that XWorks terms be used in international shipments, that you consider discussing this specific topic with your warehouse or shipping logistics manager. Which Incoterms most favor the debtor, the buyer, the customer? The answer, again, my personal opinion, is DDP, delivery duty paid. Why? Well, what DDP means is that your company as the seller fulfills its obligation to deliver the goods to the buyer only when the goods have been made available at the named place in the country of importation. In effect, what it means is you're responsible for getting the products there and all of the steps that are required to do that from getting import licenses or export licenses, from arranging for insurance, from arranging for transportation, that's your responsibility. Under DDP, you, the seller, bear the risk and the cost, including, including duties and taxes and other charges for delivering the goods to the customer cleared for importation in the foreign country. As a result, while XWorks represents the minimum obligation on the part of the seller, the creditor, DDP represents the maximum obligation to the seller, the creditor. What Incoterms do and do not do. Incoterms do. They do identify which party, the buyer or the seller, is responsible for shipping arrangements and for purchasing insurance for the shipment. What Incoterms do not do includes they do not determine the price or the payment terms or the method of payment. So that's you. You get to decide as the creditor the price and the payment terms as you would with a domestic shipment. In addition, Incoterms do not address the point of transfer of title and risk of loss. 
I'll say that again. Incoterms do not control the title transfer point. Therefore, you as the creditor should specify the title transfer point. The issue here is this. If the title transfer point is not identified in the sales contract, the transfer of title will be determined based on relevant governing law. And that, unfortunately, can easily result in disagreements between you and the customer. And as credit pros, the one thing that we know is that disagreements with customers can easily result in disputes, in deductions, and delays in payment. So rather than risking disputes and deductions and delays in payment, what we want to do is ensure that we understand Incoterms and we understand this concept called the title transfer point so that we're in a better position to manage issues relating to responsibility for loss or damage to the product in transit. Some additional comments about Incoterms. Unfortunately for us, the creditor company, selecting or agreeing on the wrong Incoterms can result in your company, the exporting company, the creditor company, being responsible for duties and fees that you had not planned to pay or accept. In addition, as I've just described in the context of DDP, selecting or using the wrong incoterms can result in a situation in which your company becomes responsible if the goods in question are lost or are damaged in transit. The reality is this, what you as a credit professional do and don't understand about incoterms can in fact have a significant financial impact on your company as the seller. It can potentially turn a profitable sale into a loss. It can potentially result in delays in payment. In effect, it can potentially result in non-payment when you, of course, as the creditor, assume and expect and believe that this payment is owed to your company. So choosing the wrong incoterms can make it less likely that you will be paid. And the best example of that, of course, is when your company as the seller is responsible for loss or damage to goods in transit, which unfortunately can and does happen in the context of international shipments. Just a quick note, I'm using the word here, wrong incoterms, as a convenience. It's a shortcut. I recognize that incoterms are one of the things that the customer may negotiate with your company and you as the creditor may or may not be in a position to demand a specific incoterm be included in your contract with a foreign buyer. With that said, it's important to recognize the obligations of the party to understand what the risks are in connection with each incoterm that may be negotiated with a specific customer in a specific country. Why? Because it may impact your company's ability to get paid in a timely manner by that foreign buyer. Well, thank you very much for your time and attention. I hope you found this presentation to be interesting and useful. If you're interested in ordering the entire one hour presentation, please contact the Sponsoring Credit Association for more information. Thank you again. Have a great day. Bye.